hello everyone and welcome to stitches and coffee with Yurgita and uh, today I'm again gonna continue my stitchy book reviews where I'm gonna go through all of the patterns um, designs listed in the stitchy book and uh, I'm not gonna show you patterns of course but I'm hoping that if you've been searching for a specific pattern that you'll uh, find that out in a specific book or if you didn't know what to stitch you might get inspired to uh, find this book and uh, stitch from it and uh, perhaps uh, keep it for a future too and uh, especially if you're gonna get a lot of uh, different uh, design ideas from that so today i'm gonna show you this uh, cross stitch skills techniques 150 practical projects uh, the, the book author is Dorothy Wood so uh, I'm gonna try in this video uh, slightly different style than what I've uh, recorded previously because there's a lot of the small designs and uh, where the patterns are marked on the same page and instead of me constantly covering up and pausing it I might do like uh, pictures and talk over them so we'll see but first uh, let's uh, ov look over over the whole thing so as you can see the book is not very uh, giant not thick but it's uh, small um, small writing in that and you see how thick it is so there's uh, a lot a lot um, in it and uh, we'll just look uh, quickly at the beginning of the book what it contains and then we'll go through the through the pictures um, and uh, continue so a lot of the uh, patterns will be in just anchor uh, the threads or some will be just in dmc uh, from what i've seen so far so i know it's not very giant the pattern so it should not be very hard for you to find the conversion uh, and um, this uh, book was uh, published license in 2011 uh, and uh, let's see this uh, is from England um, at least it, it, it tells us and the contents uh, lots of introduction and then we're gonna have a uh, separate chapters with antique and medieval style traditional folk art and contemporary so this book I got from uh, uh, one of the libraries and um, um, I'm, I'm gonna need to look through that uh, more so in the beginning there's a history of uh, cross stitch and you see how small the writing is in here so uh, I would suggest if you want to stitch any patterns from that maybe like a scan and a large or take a picture and enlarge uh, with tablet or computer and it would be easier to sh uh, to see everything so threads fabric tools equipment how to make basic stitches work from a chart beginning and finishing techniques extras like uh, how to make a cord work with the ribbon bias etc and then uh, what was the inspiration and gives you like um, how to trace everything because it, you don't have to stitch specifically on the uh, on the cross stitch fabric so uh, we're now at uh, first chapter antique and medieval and uh, let's uh, go through the pictures so the first picture we have uh, all the chapters listed and introduction uh, with all the other things that uh, you're gonna find in the contents and then let's start with the first chapter which is antique and medieval and it says capture the excitement and color of medieval pageants festivals and lavish tournaments with the designs in this section so let's start with this section first is a medieval tie bag and it tells us that these beautiful chunky tie bags are the ideal size to hold back a big heavy curtain for the front door and this one was stitched on the natural hessian fabric i don't know uh, what type of fabric exactly this is but it would be interesting to try out and uh, for the threads it was uh, given uh, as an anchor tapestry wool threads and it tells you how to put it all together with the backing and how to sew it all uh, in one as a one piece the next project we have is medieval cushion 
uh, that has the bright colors and it was stitched on the seven count Sudan canvas. I wonder if any of you stitch on the, this type of canvas and uh, how is it different than um, regular type of canvases. And again, it's stitched with uh, anchor tapestry wool threads. Then we have another little uh, cushion or a pillow and it's a Celtic cushion. Um, it says it will look most effective team to several others in different shades of blue and yellow and scattered on the couch. And uh, this one is also a stitch on a seven count Sudan canvas with anchor uh, tapestry wool. Then the next one we have is the fire screen. So the fire screen um, is, uh, is done on um, Let's see, 28 count Quaker even weave linen with uh, anchor threads. And it tells you how to put it all together and it's a tie, uh, two colors of uh, backstitch in that. So the next is the napkin ring that was stitched on a 10 count single canvas. And uh, uh, let's see, that's just the regular with the two colors of anchor threads. Then it follows with the napkin. Uh, it says this Celtic knot design is quick and easy to sew. Uh, and this uh, that we see is uh, with the frayed edges and was stitched on a 28 count even with linen with one color of anchor thread. Then there is a chair cover that w should fit uh, all standard size dining room chair with drop-in seat. Stitch on a seven count Sudan canvas with the DMC tapestry wool this uh, time. And uh, this cute uh, lady in a tower uh, was inspired by the rich colors of a medieval illuminated manuscript. Stitch on a white 22 count Hardinger fabric with the, the regular uh, DMC stranded cotton floss. And there is a one color of back stitching. Then we see this uh, strange creature, uh, it's called illuminated letter. letter um, and uh, it has a simple pine frame painted, uh, stitch on 28 count uh, cream even weave linen with the DMC uh, threads. Then there is a Celtic bag that it also gives you instructions exactly how to sew it all together, how to put it all together. And uh, uh, let's see, it was done on a 27 count antique Ada Linda by Zweigart with the, just the DMC threads and there's several uh, backstitch uh, colors too. Then uh, cover buttons, so the, you don't have to choose those exact colors, you can always uh, go with the different ones. Uh, this, this design will cover uh, one and quarter inch buttons or three centimeters, could be adapted of course. Uh, this one was done in uh, black 27 count Linda Zweigart with the uh, crane gold braid um, anchor uh, threads and you uh, it uh, tells you how to cover it up another thing to cover up is a stool cover uh, stitch on the seven count sudan canvas uh, and uh, use the anchor tapestry wool for that and this cute alphabet block so it was uh, given uh, four different things a b c and there's a cross and uh, it was done on a 14 count uh, navy ada with the cotton perle number five uh, by dmc i think it says perle not pearl um, gift tag uh, cute um, with medieval bird uh, it says could be you also used to decorate man's tie that would be interesting to see uh, of course you can use uh, over dyed threads in there too to make it more um, not as stark and the contrast colors. This one was stitched on 28 count Joe Blend fabric with the DMC threads. Next, we have a bookmark on uh, stitching paper. I guess it would be considered perforated paper. Um, so this is tasseled medieval bookmark and um, it shows you with the DMC threads being stitched. Sewing kit, again, it tells you exactly how to put it all together and using a uh, glue. Uh, this one was uh, done on a black 14 count Ada with the DMC threads. Uh, next is Celtic knot sampler. It says this unusual design features nine different Celtic knots. You could stitch them individually, 
to make a set of greeting cards or uh, you can do all nine of them in at once this one was done on a 28 count even weave linen with the anchor threads just a couple and uh, another Celtic thing is a cross on a 14 count Ada with the anchor threads no back stitching involved then we have a Byzantine gift bag um, so it says it's ideal to hold the brooch or earrings and was adapted uh, from Byzantine gospel book as a design this one was stitched on a um, natural linen band but I guess you could uh, just uh, stitch in a regular thread and uh, finish off the edges it tells you how to sew it all together there is a little bit French knots uh, to be made and uh, was done with the anchor threads Next, we have antique dog picture um, that uh, it has a dog whose ears and tail have been elongated and interlaced to form an intricate pattern. Stitch on a 14 count cream Ada with the anchor threads and a little bit of back stitching. Then there is this uh, labyrinth paperweight on an 18 count single canvas with DMC number three cotton pearly threads very simple uh, to do and uh, that follows with the black work frame uh, it says for a richer effect work the embroidery over the whole of the frame area this one was done on a 27 count linda fabric with the anchor and the crinic threads next we have uh, something of clothing which is embroidered blouse uh, you'll need to, it says white medieval style blouse and uh, for, you'll need the graph paper um, stitch with the anchor threads and uh, 27 count black linda fabric and a tiny bit of back stitching involved then we have a waistcoat uh, it says its stunning design could also be added to an existing waistcoat using the waist canvas technique. This one was stitched on a 27 count black uh, Linda fabric and uh, used anchor uh, threads. Then we have a monastic bell pull uh, with some beads um, and which gives a little bit of richness and uh, stitch on a 14 count Ada with anchor marlet. I've never uh, played with that thread. That would be interesting to hear from you if you've used that. Uh, it had a couple uh, types of uh, Mill Hill seed beads. It used the Krynik and Madeira threads. Um, so let's see. Then trinket, trinket bowl, um, decorative Celtic motif adapted from a design on an ornate Saxon dagger. Uh, this one was done on a 28 count cashel linen with uh, just the DMC colors and a little bit of a crinic. Next we have a greeting card uh, stitched on a 28 count even with linen with DMC threads. And it says the the book of Kells is a rich source of inspiration for medieval embroidery and these two loving doves are just one example then we have a medieval clock uh, which was inspired by the magnificent architecture and bright colorful stained glass windows found in medieval churches so for that you'll need 14 count black ada um, let's see Crinic gold braid, a couple of wheels, DMC threads, uh, interfacing, MDF, and it tells you everything that you can make this and how to put it all together. There is no back stitching in this one. Let's see. Next, wool scarf. Um, motif comes from border design of a splendid illuminated manuscript from the renowned Winchester School of the early 11th century. And uh, you'll need for this, at least if you wanna make it exactly as it is, dark green wool scarf with the waist canvas and anchor threads plus the crinic thread. Then this interesting uh, medieval design is typical of those from, uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing correctly, Iona Scotland and illustrated in a book of Duro 
this one was the stitch on 27 count even with uh, linen with the anchor threads then we see spectacle case or glass case um, that was done on a 12 count single thread canvas with a cotton perle uh, number five DMC threads uh, and uh, some gold threads too to make it more sparkly cute and it tells you exactly how to put it all together with the cording etc then we have ring bearers cushion with the Celtic design uh, you can stitch in two complementary colors to match bridesmaid dresses or the wedding flowers. This one was done on a 28 count antique white linen with the DMC threads. And it shows you with the piping how to put it all together. Then uh, there is a chessboard um, that black squares are stitched in Azizi embroidery, a variation of cross stitch where the design areas are left blank and the background is filled with cross stitch so if you have never done it it does not look very complicated at all it's pretty much same thing it's just uh, you stitch everything except the main uh, pattern so this one was done on the white 14 count ada with the anchor one color thread and it, you have to have a back and board for if you want to make it exactly as it is Next, backside tablecloth uh, with unusual Celtic design that could be repeated on a border of a much larger tablecloth. You can also use that middle part and uh, stitch inside your initial if you wanted to. And this one was done on a 28 count even weave linen with anchor marlet threads again plus a gold DMC thread. Then uh, something uh, to take out is a little uh, purse um, and uh, this one was done on the 14 count black Ada with a DMC and uh, crinic threads and you'll need uh, iron on interfacing and it tells you exactly how to put it all together and sew it up. Then we have this very uh, interesting book cover that was inspired by medieval stone carving this bird design could be used to cover a small notebook or sketchbook and again uh, instructions and uh, a few pictures shows you exactly how to put it all together to cover it up this one was just stitched on a 14 count ada with anchor uh, regular uh, stranded cotton threads then we have this blackboard decorations um, that would say they say would look equally good worked in red on black fabric and uh, the one we see was done on a 27 count uh, cream or black uh, linda with a couple threads of uh, uh, anchor and uh, crinic and it gives you instructions how to put it all together let's go to chapter two which is all about traditional um, stuff and uh, it says allow yourself to be uh, tempted away from the tv and instead try your hand at simple laminate bag or a pretty table mat so let's check out what uh, it uh, gives us so first design we see in that style is a nitrous case uh, that says match the ribbon in the white crochet lace edging to the brilliant blue of these pretty cornflowers and bow so this one was stitched on a white uh, cotton fabric with a 12 count waist canvas and used dmc uh, stranded cotton floss no back stitching involved then we have a tablecloth and napkin in traditional style um, with the colorful border and uh, was done on a white 28 count joblin for tablecloth and the napkins and uh, used the anchor uh, cotton threads so then uh, it gives you all instructions how to make it up and etc floral tie bags quick and easy to make um, ideal for kitchen or utility room uh, this one was done on a raw linen band with the dmc threads and some back stitching involved in that then there is herb box and pot stand of course you don't have to 
uh, decorate it like this you can just uh, make it like around the basket or maybe even make that as a drum you just have to figure out the, the sizing for that uh, this one had a special heat proof glass inside the pot stand uh, frame to protect the design and the stitch on a uh, let's see four inch wide plain bleached linen from Inglestone collection with the DMC threads then we have this cute pot stand uh, on uh, 18 count Ada with uh, anchor thread and uh, this one had hexagonal frame that you can buy but you don't have to you can just make it as a, a round sort of like a coaster thing then again in the blue uh, theme is embroidered sheet and pillowcase um, that says it would look superb with Victorian blue and white wash bowl and a jack set on a marble wash stand. This one was stitched on a wide uh, Ada band and used anchor uh, floss. Then we go to spot motif sampler that uh, birds butterflies and flowers were very popular motifs in 19th century but the pillars make the sampler quite unusual and stitch on the antique ada 27 count with anchor threads then we see embroidered coat hanger or just a, just a regular outfit hanger and uh, you need uh, fabric for the cover, uh, waist canvas, and anchor threads for this. And it tells you exactly how to put it all together. Then we have this Victorian sewing set um, on a 22 count Hardinger fabric with uh, DMC threads. And it, again, all instructions how to put it all together uh, using glue and how to sew it up. And does not look very complicated at all. Then we have a silk toilet bag um, that was inspired by the African violet, a flower much loved by the Victorians. So uh, was used uh, um, eyelet edge and natural linen band with the DMC cotton uh, uh, fabric and the threads and the uh, burgundy silk dupion. Um, and all the things that you need to do with the brass rings to make it look like that. Then we have Victorian cushion um, that the design was adapted from some blue and white tiles which were very popular in Victorian times and stitched on a 32 count Beltas linen in here with the anchor threads and you'll need the piping cord and cushion pad so you don't have to have exactly um, this uh, silky uh, fabric for a uh, background and uh, you can choose uh, what goes well with your household then we have a towel border a these embroidered arum or lilies commonly known as a cuckoo pint or pint look most attractive on a set of pale yellow towels so it was stitched with the, uh, just the dmc threads and a couple of the back stitching um, colors were used in here then there is a lavender bag uh, that you don't have to put lavender you can put anything else that you want in there um, and it was uh, used a uh, raw linen band with blue scalloped edges with the dmc number no. eight cotton pearl threads then we have a table runner that you uh, has a kind of repeating pattern that you can adapt for any size that you need the square rectangle a uh, bit wider shorter length and uh, with uh, stitch and 36 count white even weave linen with uh, just one uh, color of anchor thread and also there is a picture mount um, you can personalize the design by adding a name in the panel below the photograph uh, this one was done on a 32 count natural even weave uh, linen and uh, with the one color of anchor thread jewelry box says this Charles Rainier Macintosh design could be adapted to fit any square or rectangular box you may have so you just adjust the, the length of the side to make and this one was done in 32 count even weave linen and it has a DMC anchor marlet uh, DMC gold thread 
and the glisten gloss uh, luster threads so there is a mis mishmash of uh, different types of threads and uh, maybe that gives them um, more uh, d different look than it would be just with the one brand and it shows you how to cover the box next is the floral tray um, that has a glass inset to protect embroidery stitch on a 32 count uh, cream cash and linen with DMC threads and I think I have that kind of tray um, the, there is a squares and there is a rectangle sizes so you again you can adjust uh, the width um, if you just extend the edges a little bit then we have those interesting embroidery slippers uh, velvet ones with um, stitch with anchor northern threads I'm curious uh, if any of you stitch with that type of thread it is something different I didn't know such a name existed uh, type maybe they don't make them anymore I don't know it would be uh, interesting to find out then pram quilt or uh, buggy quilt for children for babies uh, this one was done on the end fabric with the DMC stranded cotton threads and you'll need um, lining fabric interfacing and uh, batting or wadding um, I guess that's an English word for that then we have a, a brooch cushion um, on a 36 count even weave linen with the DMC threads stitch on that and of course you'll need the cushion pad for that then again greetings card uh, that you use a square of fine calico cream silk dupion oh, and the DMC threads uh, if you want to make it exactly as it looks in this picture next handkerchief case um, that was done on the white 36 count even weave linen with DMC threads no backstitching involved and it tells you how to make it look like that exactly then we have another little sampler uh, it's called band sampler with DMC threads on a 28 count casual linen and then something small is a gift tag and an 18 count rustico Zweigart with the DMC threads and this one has some backstitching involved next picture you see is a cottage garden tea cozy uh, which was padded and uh, stitched on a white 28 count even with linen with the DMC threads the whole collection of them and you'll need to says sewing machine to sew it all together so it uh, shows you exactly how to put it all together to look like that next is a pin cushion um, that may look complicated but easy if you work the floral design first and then fill in a tartan background stitch on the 18 count ivory ada with the anchor threads no back stitching next we have a table mat on 36 count even weave linen with anchor uh, marlet threads and a very simple round little thing to do then it's a school sampler it says this 19th century sampler is typical of those worked in the schools by girls as young as 9 or 10 as part of the general education and uh, I know there are some samplers done by 13 year olds or 11 year olds that in, in these days nowadays uh, is uh, even harder to stitch for uh, more experienced adults especially all those specialty stitches involved but this one is very simple um, that anybody should be able to do and you can use of course over dyed threads here especially uh, when you have a bigger blocks uh, to stitch like the house and um, those bunnies on the bottom and uh, uh, notice that uh, after P on the second row of the letters there is uh, uh, looks like a mm, mirrored P in there instead of like a Q so it's uh, it's interesting look and this one was done on 28 count cashew linen with uh, DMC threads then we have a birth keepsake um, you can use it as a pin cushion uh, on the white 25 count Lugana with the DMC threads and uh, looks like this one was also used uh, with the beads and uh, crochet lace edging 
Next, we have a little sewing box lid on a 22 count Hardinger fabric with the DMC threads. No back stitching involved. Next picture, we have a traditional Christmas stocking, um, and it was done on a, a white bleached uh, linen band. Uh, with uh, gold Krynik and the DMC threads blending filament by Krynik and it shows you how to put it all together sew it up so it would look like uh, that next we have a Christmas decorations uh, it says these Victorian toys are quick and easy to sew on the special vinyl canvas which has a similar weave to Hardinger and it's a 14 count canvas uh, with a uh, stitch with anchor and uh, Krynik braid so you stitch and then cut out and uh, you make it look like that with the, some glue. Then we have a Christmas cards on uh, silk dupion um, or pané velvet, I guess I'm pronouncing correctly, with uh, anchor thread and uh, crinic uh, braid. Very quick to do. And you can make it out probably also in the ornament, not necessarily in the greeting card. Then we have a Christmas wreath picture. Um, you can decorate with red and orange berries to complement the colors in the embroidery. And this one was done on a 14 count cream Ada with the anchor threads and uh, one color of back stitching. Then this very interesting angel picture, stitch on an 18 count ivory Ada with the anchor threads and one color of the back stitching and uh, you can always change your skin color um, to make it uh, whichever you want and a very interesting good uh, design so that was it for uh, chapter two let's go to chapter three which is folk art it says exotic unusual and charming designs from around the world are increasingly fashionable so we're gonna go all over the world and see um, a lot of bold colors and uh, popping out uh, not uh, subdued so first design in this um, chapter we have a shaker box uh, that explains these oval beechwood boxes were used by the shakers to hold all sorts of things they can be waxed or painted to match the fabric cover and there was stitch on 18 count maroon ada with anchor uh, northern threads and you'll need the ribbons and it tell, shows you exactly how to do to make it look like that then we have a nine star picture uh, inspired by early american patchwork heart and star pictures it was stitched on a 28 count cashel linen with the anchor uh, stranded, stand, stranded cotton floss and some back stitching involved too next we have this utensil box that uh, you can paint um, any color you want was done on a 28 count natural even weave linen with anchor threads then this interesting heart vine wreath um, with fresh virginia creeper or clematis stems uh, then let it dry out under weight to hold the heart shape so uh, the designs were stitched on a 28 count cashel linen with uh, anchor northern uh, thread and uh, also with the uh, same color uh, doing uh, back stitching so you, it shows you exactly how to make uh, that heart shape uh, on the wreath and uh, then how to stitch it all and put it together then we have a tray cloth design could be adapted to, to a tray of any size and this one just involves some different uh, like a fabric and uh, interfacing and one thread of uh, anchor northern uh, and it also has those buttons in there uh, along the sides and in the middle to put it all together then we have a curtain palmet uh, that uh, has a uh, cream uh, red green and cream uh, gingham gingham uh, waist canvas and anchor uh, threads Next is this interesting game board that you don't have to make it as a game board. You can be just a um, little tray to put maybe your uh, little um, like a pillow, so pin cushions and things like that. But this one, if you want to make it exactly like that, it tells you how to uh, put it all together and um, paint it and uh, stitch 
was done on a 32 count even with linen and um, you'll need fiberboard, uh, anchor threads, uh, wood edging, it tells you everything you need, wood glue, different what kind of paint, mount board, etc. So the two sides are uh, same uh, that was stitched and put it in and the metal was uh, used for gaming. Then we have uh, something sim more simpler which is a napkin uh, which was finished with pretty uh, two color border to match the hard design. Uh, stitch on a 28 count jobland fabric with anchor northern thread. Next is the herb decoration uh, on a 28 count bell passed linen with the uh, stranded cotton DMC and you'll need the ribbon to make it look like that. Next patchwork cushion. Um, the motifs on this homespun patchwork cushion are based on the 19th century North American samplers stitched on uh, different gingham uh, fabrics and uh, used the DMC uh, cotton thread. Kitchen apron, um, and, uh, stitched with the waist canvas and uh, cotton perlaine number five. Um, so there's a couple buttons uh, to, to make it look like a more gingerbread man. Hand towel, um, uh, just any you can use with the, let's see, DMC threads and one color of uh, um, back stitching. Then this wooden spoon mobile, it's a paint an old wooden spoon and make a charming kitchen decoration with some oddments of gingham and embroidery cotton. Uh, stitch on, we're using 14 count waist canvas. You need fusible bonding web, uh, anchor northern and uh, all the other stuff that you'll need uh, to paint it up and make it look like that. Next we have this party horse uh, folk art doll and uh, you'll need white cotton fabric, 14 count waist canvas, DMC, stranded cotton threads and some ribbons and stuffing etc. Guest towel uh, is done on uh, homespun check fabric and uh, use the cotton perlin number no. 5 by DMC and a bit of back stitching involved. Folk art cow that this one you can you don't have to stitch cow if you don't want you can just use border and put the picture in there or a mirror or the opposite you can just stitch the cow and make that as, a, as a, just a separate thing this one was done on 14 count white ada with a, a cotton a broader dmc so i don't know if it's different uh, type of thread or not then we have herbs on the rope um, says you can fill these five lovely, lovely bags of cinnamon sticks, chili peppers or dried herbs and hang on the kitchen wall. A we'll stitch on a, a white 16 count Ada with uh, DMC threads and it tells you exactly how to make it look like that. Next we have embroidered laundry bag um, that you can make initials and uh, let's see just use one color of uh, DMC thread and the piping cord to make it all look like that. And that's 12 in uh, red colors. So this one is Swiss alphabet sampler, uh, which were particularly popular in Europe in the 19th century. This one was done on a white 14 count Ada. And again, you can use over dyed, uh, slightly over dyed thread to uh, make it slightly different if you want. You don't even have to do that in a red color. You can do in a blue, I guess. Any uh, one uh, color would do. And uh, again, red color is in this Swiss pillowcase. That was white Oxford pillowcase and 14 count waist canvas uh, used for that with uh, one color of anchor in here. But uh, you can choose any color that you want. Next we have Potpourri Sachet, um, it says the beautiful white Austrian lace as the finishing touch to this charming little cross stitch design. It's very quick, it's one evening or like our job to do uh, white 14 count Ada and uh, DMC threads. Next we have this interesting shelf border that uh, has repetitive design. 
uh, it was very popular in Eastern Europe where carnation is a traditional motive. Um, motif, I probably should say not motive. Um, this one was the bleached linen blue edge band with a couple colors of anchor threads. Bedside tablecloth, again, a kind of repetition uh, happening in here on a white 28 count cash shell um, linen with uh, DMC colors. Next, we have this Chinese box. Again, it shows you exactly how to make it look like that all around it up. And this tiger design on a box adapted from a cylindrical Chinese seal from Hong Kong. Stitch on a white 25 count Lugano with a couple um, anchor threads. Next we have this Indian neck purse. Um, it's typical of those made by the nomadic Banjara people. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing correctly. Uh, the design layout was inspired by the wooden architecture in Gujarat, Gujarat, G-U-J-A-R-A-T, stitched on a red 20, found 20 count even weave linen with a uh, cotton embroidery number 16 DMC and the DMC flower threads. Another type of thread is introduced in here. and. Uh, it looks like a very simple design and uh, it shows you exactly how to make it look like that. Next we have a couple African things. Uh, one first one is a mask that has been mounted in a long frame to give it appearance of African shield. It was uh, done in a khaki 28 count Annabelle fabric with uh, DMC stranded cotton threads. And uh, follows that African cushion. Uh, mini cushion and uh, you can make it larger uh, this one was done on seven count Sudan canvas with the anchor tapestry wall no backstitching involved next we have a sketchbook cover ribbon fastening helps to keep uh, cuttings or loose sketches safe stitch on a black 27 count Linda fabric with the DMC stranded cotton and one color of backstitching used for this one Next, pocket bag um, says the shape of this bag is based on a shigra basket from Ecuador. The people there use it to carry fruit and vegetables. Uh, so you'll need the sand color uh, canvas uh, fabric and anchor northern threads to make it look like that. Next, another bag is a Mexican toy bag on uh, antique white 20 count Bellana by Zweigart with the stranded cotton DMC threads. Then uh, another bag is for shoes. Uh, it says geometric weaving designs can be adapted quite easily into cross stitch. These stylized animals come from a hammock made in Ghana and was done on a 28 count Quaker even weave linen with DMC stranded cotton threads. Then we're going away from our bags into Mexican wall hanging. It was done on 32 count natural even weave linen with stranded DMC threads. Um, and this design was inspired by traditional Mexican God's eyes. Next is the Indian mobile. Uh, shisha mirrors are traditionally hung to protect against the evil in the belief that any spirit seeing its reflection will be terrified and flee. So this one was done on two sheets of dark green stitching paper, a Jane Greenoff's Inglestone collection with the DMC stranded cotton threads. And was used also piano wire. Although you don't have to use piano wire, you can use any other type of wire or um, just the regular threads, anything that you want. Now let's go to this a different color, napkin ring and table mat, uh, worn by the nomadic Baluchi people of Western Pakistan. It was done on a black 18 count Ada for a napkin ring and for a table mat, and just used the DMC stranded cotton threads for this. Indian picture frame. Um, Let's see, this is one of the most traditional is the elephant motifs. Um, and this one was on a seven count plastic canvas with anchor stranded cotton threads. And it tells you how to put it all together to look like that. And then we have Indian mirror frame. Um, 
with a rich, rich uh, texture finish with addition of shisha mirrors and silver beads on a 10 count single thread canvas and with anchor stranded cotton threads um, and uh, Indian hangings um, says Indian embroidery often incorporates shisha mirrors to ward off evil spirits but, la but large sequins can look just as pretty and again on uh, Jane Greenoff's stitching paper with DMC uh, threads and it was used with uh, uh, those sequins so that's done for that chapter three Let's start with chapter four, which is contemporary designs. And it says these bright and colorful projects are inspired by lazy summer days, long walks in the flower filled meadows and holidays by the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. So let's see what designs offer in this chapter. So first we have a cushion and it says this chunky cup design is ideal for conservatory or kitchen chair cushions and does not look very complicated design. Uh, this one was stitched on seven count Sudan canvas with anchor tapestry wool. No back stitching is needed. Next we have this embroidered dungarees and hat band um, that would make a lovely design for a child's uh, dungarees and straw hat. Um, like uh, you, you need to use 14 count waist canvas of course get the straw hat uh, and uh, aid a band to wrap around the, the hat and the design can be repeated uh, as long as you want then we have this embroidered book uh, which is made from off cuts of card or cardboard and fabrics it contains some small sheets of handmade paper and uh, you need to use anchor uh, stranded cotton for that and the different types of fabric and binding web and it tells you everything that you need to use for this one then we have a decorative mirror uh, just the right size to fit in your handbag uh, and was stitched on a 27 count uh, linda fabric with um, krynica braid and anchor marlet then we have a greetings card, uh, this style, uh, 28 count Irish linen with anchor Norden and uh, it tells you exactly how to make it. It's very simplistic because uh, the edges of the stitch part is not finished off so it could be fraying but you can always um, do something about it. Uh, maybe put some uh, like um, non-fraying uh, on uh, some part of it to not to uh, totally rip it apart so in the next picture we see is the table mat uh, you can adapt to suit any room setting uh, this one was done on a terracotta 28 count even weave with the DMC stranded cotton threads and one color in the back stitching then we have a photo frame on a 14 count white Ada and uh, anchor threads for that then we have a brighter colors for a tie bags with the sunflowers and if you need the blue and white gingham fabric waist canvas and dmc threads for this no back stitching involved and the same theme goes on the towels to match it and uh, again 14 count waist canvas and dmc threads were used for this one then something smaller in the uh, flowers is a daisy cushion uh, with 10 count waist canvas this time. Depends what size cushion I guess you want to make. So you can always adjust the waist canvas or uh, the size of the uh, pillows that you want to make. Next we have a garden apron with uh, uh, that was uh, on the canvas and uh, you need waist canvas, anchor threads and it shows you exactly how to sew it all together. Um, Noah's Ark uh, is a perennial favorite and design uh, with its colorful animals uh, particularly appealing on a 22 count white uh, hardanger fabric with DMC uh, threads in here worked. So you can pull out the uh, little uh, creatures in there and stitch separately if you want it on a bib for example. Then we have a pencil pot uh, stitched on a 28 count Irish linen with DMC threads. Um, 
and just uh, attach it. It's a very quick one evening uh, thing. Children's badges on a plastic canvas, 10 or 14 count with anchor marlet uh, stitched. Very quick to do, a little bit back stitching involved in that one. Bathroom cabinet uh, was uh, handmade in pine and painted with red and white stripes to match the cross stitch design. Although I guess if you find some kind of like a, a birdhouse, you can cover the hole with your stitching. This one was stitched on a blue 32 count linen with the DMC stranded cotton threads. And it uh, tells you quickly how to make it. Next we have embroidered linen shirt uh, with anchor marlet threads, repetitive design. You can make it as long as you want. Then something different is a decorative bath mat um, with large swirls and the cross stitches. Um, you can uh, adjust the colors uh, to go with your color theme. And uh, this one was done with the soft cotton anchor for that. Next we have a plum curtains and a bleached uh, linen band with a uh, st stranded cotton anchor threads and uh, one uh, type of back stitching. Plump box, uh, you'll need 28 count linen to make it look exactly like that and DMC stranded cotton uh, threads. This clock uh, was only with one color stitch and the back stitched and uh, this one was done on 18 count navy Ada and it tells you what you need to do <laughs> like a use a hand saw glue and crackle varnish to look exactly like that and of course you need clock mechanism for it. Next we have Yanni's Taverna, um, it says this peaceful seaside scene was inspired by a typical Greek taverna and conjures up a summer holiday feeling and stitch on an antique white 28 count even weave linen with DMC threads. Next is a key holder, um, let's see, you'll need a sheet of platinum Ada Plus and uh, DMC threads to make those little uh, things. Then um, very contemporary design, Roman blind uh, with uh, 10 count waist canvas and DMC stranded uh, cotton, you'll need the brass rings to make it all look like that. Next picture is a chambray pillowcase uh, with the monograms. Uh, you can again get your uh, different color uh, threads if you want and just monogram it. And all the letters are given uh, to you to stitch like that with uh, anchor uh, thread, but you can use anything you want. Next we have a miniature picture on a 36 count linen with anchor threads and one color of back stitching. Then we have a cafetiere cover um, or like a glass coffee jar. Uh, stitch on a 14 count Ada with anchor strand and cotton threads. Then repetitive design is a shelf border that you can again stitch on uh, maybe an outfit if you want it or uh, like a bib. Um, but this one was done with uh, anchor threads and one type of uh, back stitching involved to outline all the parts. Then we have a child's uh, waistcoat, a denim with anchor stranded cotton and you'll need the uh, fusible binding wear for that and a couple buttons. Child's bag, um, you'll need blue gingham, uh, anchor stranded uh, cotton, uh, fusible binding web, uh, pins, and uh, it shows you exactly how to make it all look like that. Next we have kitchen hanging on the 28 count even weave linen with the DMC threads. You need batting, ribbon, and all the stuff to, to make it look like that. Next, pot holder was inspired by the lemon trees and deep blue sea of Mediterranean. Uh, was done on a 14 count white Ada with a couple colors of DMC stranded cotton threads. No back stitching. Rucksack, again, uh, all instructions how to uh, make it all look like that. Sew it up on uh, 18 count Ada with anchor stranded cotton, and you'll need some canvas pieces, parts, and tells you exactly the size to cut to sew it up together. 
Next is a different design, a uh, background mount uh, that you stitch and also it tells you how to make this little wreath, um, Christmas wreath that you can renew each year, how to make it all together. But the stitching part is on the 14 count uh, Lurex Ada with the cryonic uh, braid and filament and one color of anchor threads. Next is the egg cabinet. Um, the stitching was done with the DMC threads on the 28 count beige Joblin fabric. And uh, looks like it's, uh, you can also do uh, over, uh, heavily over dyed threads. Next we have a gift bag on um, metallic organza fabric, uh, bur burgundy silk dupion and uh, anchor marlet with one type of back stitching. And the last <laughs> design is the Christmas decorations uh, with anchor marlet cryonic um, gold braid done on a 22 count single canvas. And uh, you'll need uh, paper, uh, handmade paper, cord and the glue with the whole punch. And the uh, last we have acknowledgement suppliers throughout the whole world. I don't know if they're still um, all available, but you can always check it out. And uh, then there is index of all the designs that we find in this book. So this is all of that book. Like I said, it's um, it's a small uh, small uh, letter size, but uh, you can tell also by the like uh, edging on the top what style it is. Like contemporary, for example, there's a folk art. So if you want a specific chapter, a uh, specific style, then you can look. And at the end, there is a place for notes for you to write, of course, when you own the book. And like uh, suppliers throughout the whole world, not just US or uh, uh, England, and index of all of those things. So this is the end, uh, other side of the book. And I think that it has a lot, a lot of different styles and different um, taste uh, uh, for you in there hopefully and uh, if you are uh, gonna get this book and planning to stitch or some of the uh, patterns uh, you really liked and you want to get it uh, it would be great if you would let me know below uh, to say that it was helpful to you or if you just enjoyed um, watching listening through this book so that's it with this book and i'm saying until the next time this is Sergita saying bye bye <laughs>